Hey guys, welcome back, and draft season starts now. We're starting off with the quarterback rankings. We're going to be doing the top 15 quarterbacks entering the college football season now. Before we get into it, got a big announcement. My draft guide and the mock draft guys draft guide is going to be live on our Patreon. So starting today, you guys for $5 a month will get exclusive access to my draft guide, get to see my evaluations, get to read a little bit more in depth on each of these quarterbacks, go through the games that I've studied, look at pro comparisons, which I don't have on these slides, draft range, all sorts of incredible stuff. You get to compare both mine and the mock draft guys right there. So if you guys do enjoy my content, it's five bucks a month, you get exclusive access to the draft guide. You get access as well to power rankings, plot prospect interviews. One of the quarterbacks on here, I have done an interview with. So if you guys do want to see a little bit more there, be sure to check that out. Also sign up for underdog fantasy using my code JWAC to get double your initial deposit. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first couple of guys are more projection. Haven't really gotten to see them play a ton of collegiate games, but the upside with them, I think, is extremely high. And we're going to start off at number 15 with Miller Moss. Yeah, another USC quarterback. Um, going to be very interesting to kind of see where Miller Moss goes. We know Lincoln Riley has a very quarterback-friendly offense and an offense that seems to always be at the top of college football. I think Miller Moss is going to be a really good player. You could see it in that game, that bowl game against Louisville. He's mobile. He's a three-level passer who's got an incredible arm. And his ball placement was next level. He could put the football on a string. He could throw the ball with touch down the field. He's got incredible zip on his passes as well. He's just a natural thrower. It didn't look like there was any throw on the field that Miller Moss could not make. He has a lot of confidence that he brings. He's got some mobility. Like I said, he can complete passes deep. Um, and him and Zachariah Branch are going to be an incredible duo next year. His speed mixed with Miller Moss's arm, I think, could cause some serious problems for teams in the Big Ten. The issues, he's got one career start. Obviously, was backing up Caleb Williams. Played in the bowl game against Louisville since Caleb Williams did opt out of it. And he did play some hero ball in that game. It looked like he struggled to read defenses. It looked like a lot of his throws were predetermined. Telegraphed some of his passes and was trying to throw, you know, try to be the hero at times. Also, <clears throat> really struggled under pressure at times. Didn't recognize blitzes very well. Tried to force it into tight coverages. Threw off his back foot. I think his footwork is another area of improvement for Miller Moss. But I think he's got all the tools to be one of those guys. Obviously, he might not be here next year. There's a lot of guys that ended up just missing the cut. Very good quarterback class. I got Moss at 15. I think the upside's there, but right now, still a little too early to tell. Same thing with my number 14 guy, and that's going to be Garrett Newsmeyer from LSU. I think coming into this year, I'm higher on Newsmeyer than I was coming into last year with Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels ended up being the number two overall pick. He's got an unbelievable, unbelievable arm. It, it feels like Michael Penix's arm. Um, he's just got a rocket. I think he might have the best deep ball in the entire draft class. We saw it with some in that game against Wisconsin. Similarly to Miller Moss, Newsmeyer only has got one career start. He's got a rocket. The ball placement is absolutely fantastic. He could throw the ball at all three levels, but his deep ball is his bread and butter. Good pocket presence, was able to escape pressure well. Um, got zip on his passes, can throw the ball with touch as well. But again, experience is going to be an issue for him didn't read defenses particularly well I didn't think especially in that Wisconsin game had some bad mistakes that I think could have been prevented and he's got a bit of an odd throwing motion throws at a bit of a sidearm delivery which isn't something that I'm too worried about with Newsmeyer, but it is something that I think should be brought up when we talk about Garris Newsmeyer's concerns the throwing motion is not very natural to me but I think he's got an incredible deep ball. He's got a good pocket presence. And with those weapons at LSU, I think he could make some serious noise in the SEC and contend for a first round, maybe an early second round pick if he has the season that I think he can have. Pretty high on Neusmeyer. He's my number 14 quarterback. Number 13, it's Dylan Gabriel. I've seen him as high as QB1 for some people. I think that's absolutely outrageous. He's got absolutely no touch on his passes. He throws the ball at one speed 
and it is as fast and as hard as he can get the ball out. Now, he does have incredible zip on his passes. He's mobile, and I actually think he's a bit Kyler Murray-ish in terms of the way he can kind of maneuver the pocket, his movement skills. He's got a very good deep ball. He can put the ball on the string, good ball placement as well. But there are a lot of issues with Dylan Gabriel that I think kind of get just glanced over. He's undersized. He's 5'11". He's an older prospect. I think he's going to be around 24 at the time of the draft. He's a grad transfer, played at UCF, played at Oklahoma the last two years. Now he's going to Oregon. Well, I do think Dylan Gabriel is going to have an outstanding season in Dan Lanning's offense. We saw how quarterback friendly it was with Bo Nix. I think there are a lot of issues in his game. His footwork, I think, could uh, definitely improve. He feels like a one-read quarterback, and if it's not there, he likes to take off, likes to extend plays with his legs. There's a lot of upside with Dylan Gabriel because he's got the arm talent, he's got the athleticism necessary, but he's got to work on throwing the ball with a little bit more touch. He's got to, I mean, he can't really help his size or his age there, but I think his footwork can improve. I think his, in terms of going through his progressions, that can improve. I think he's going to have a really good year and probably could sneak into the top 10, but there are some concerns I have with Dylan Gabriel. And number 12, it is Brady Cook from Missouri, a guy that I think a lot of people are sleeping on in this class. Yes, Missouri runs a very quarterback-friendly offense, heavy RPO, a lot of short to intermediate passes there for Brady Cook, but he was incredibly accurate with the football. Just seemed like he knew where to go with the football at all times made very good decision makers. It didn't really get himself into a lot of trouble. I think the Kentucky game, we saw him throw some bad passes, but overall really, really liked what he can do with the football. He's accurate. He's got the pocket presence. He's a solid athlete. He's got the option on the RPO to take off and run. And we have seen Brady Cook do that. I like what he can do. The question a lot of people are going to have, is it the weapons or is it Brady Cook? And I think he is a really good player. Now, at times, we talked about heavy RPO offense. He doesn't play a lot in structure, a lot of short passes, a lot of intermediate passes. While he connects at a high level, there are some questions there. I think his deep ball is good when he is asked to throw it. However, when he's on the run, really felt like he could not throw the ball whatsoever. It felt like if he got outside the pocket, it was kind of over. He had to take off. He had to set his feet and throw. That's something that I think could cause a lot of issues for him. He just tried to force the ball into coverage, just stared down his receivers at times, didn't go through progressions as well as I would have liked. I think Brady Cook is probably going to end up being like a mid-round pick, but I think the upside is there. I like what he can do with the football. Good decision maker, and he's at number 12 on my list. At number 11, I think is going to be one of the more controversial takes here. It is Jalen Daniels out of Kansas. I know a lot of people love Jalen Daniels, and admittedly, I think Jalen Daniels can be He's got the potential to be one of the top five quarterbacks in this class next year. Going into this year, though, he's got some major concerns for me. Let's talk about the positives with Jalen Daniels, though. He's an incredible athlete. He's going to get a lot of Jaden Daniels comparisons, which is pretty funny considering there's like two letters different in their names. He is an unbelievable athlete. He's got, when he took off, he was wiry, electric, could juke guys out of their shoes, really liked what he could do. He's got really good pocket presence, just felt pressure so well, and he's got a good arm. He's got natural zip. He can throw the ball into some tight windows with some zip there, but he's also got touch on that deep ball. could just fit the ball into some really, really good windows where only the receivers could get it. There's a lot to like there in terms of him as a passer, him as a runner, but He's coming off a back injury. Now, back injuries scare me. That just doesn't really feel like an injury that – is not, it's just going to go away. I think, yes, he's young, but a back injury, I think, could linger for him. We saw it last year. There were times they're like, Jalen Daniels should be back in the next couple of weeks. He was out the entire season. Kansas had a great season, but we've got some concerns there about the injury history. On top of that, he's a one read quarterback, felt like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball. If it wasn't there, he took off and ran with it. Didn't love that. He's got a very odd throwing motion kind of back and side. It's just, it just looks weird coming out of his arm. And then the deep ball I felt like was inaccurate. I think he's got to work on his deep ball accuracy. If he can work on those things, the injury history and the medicals look good. He, he can improve the throwing motion, can go through his progressions and improve the deep ball. I don't think there are issues that can't be fixed. I think they're very fixable. And he can be a top five quarterback in the class come 
next April and could end up sneaking into the first round. I think the upside's there, but there are too many question marks for me, not enough answers, and Jalen Daniels is at number 11. Entering the top 10 here, we've got Cade Klubnick. Cade Klubnick is one of the most frustrating watches in this entire draft class because when he's on, he looks outstanding. Go back to his uh, freshman season at Clemson. Go back to that Orange Bowl against Tennessee. He was incredible in that game. He can hit receivers and stride on the run beautifully. He goes through his progressions. He reads the field well. He's got good accuracy, and he's got the versatility as an athlete to take off, make plays with his legs. I love it. Way too many inconsistencies with Cade Klubnick. That's why he's at 10 and not higher, because I think a lot of the tools are there. He just seems to get in his head at times, and the confidence kind of goes away, which I don't like as a quarterback. You've got to have confidence, which is a big reason why I think a guy up here is a little bit higher than he should be because I just love his confidence. A lot of underthrows on his tape, which was a bit concerning because he's got the arm talent. He just would throw it short on a lot of these passes. And I'm like, okay, that's something that's got to get worked out this year. And I thought his pocket presence and blitz blitz recognition was pretty poor. I think he's a good kind of game manager quarterback who can take off with his legs, I don't know if he's a superstar, but he does a lot of things extremely well. I think he's a good thrower. He's got the arm talent at all three levels. I think he's got great touch, good athleticism. If he can be a little bit more consistent and be a little bit more accurate and not under throw a lot, I think Kate Klubnick could end up being a very good quarterback come next year. At number nine, we've got Graham Mertz from Florida. This is a my guy in this class. I know you're not going to find another quarterback ranking that is going to have Graham Mertz this high. I think Graham Mertz is a very fun quarterback from Florida. Yeah, he's older, spent a lot of time at Wisconsin, transferred to Florida last year. A lot of short to intermediate passes, but he was just a very accurate quarterback. Made good decisions, knew where he wanted to go with the football, didn't turn the ball over. On top of that, I thought his pocket presence was really good felt pressure well, was able to move up, keep his eyes downfield, make a play. I love that. He's got good ball placement as well. Put the ball into some tight windows. I think that's a lot of tools that you really like. The deep ball is not incredible with Graham Mertz. The deep ball is not one of his strengths. He's going to work the middle of the field, that short to intermediate game. He does it at a very high level. I think at times he lost the linebacker in coverage at times, just misread the defense. If he can work on his pre-snap recognition, I think he could be one of the better quarterbacks coming out of this draft class because I think he's got the decision-making, the accuracy, the ball placement, and the experience necessary to be a really good quarterback. Maybe there are some concerns about he's not the greatest athlete, doesn't have the most amazing deep ball, but I think a lot of the tools are there. I think Graham Mertz is going to be a really good quarterback. Um, I think Florida now has weapons, but it's going to be interesting to see kind of what, what the direction is for the Gators entering next year. At number eight, it's Quinn Ewers. I think Ewers has so much upside at the position. You can see he's just not put it together yet. He's kind of a play action merchant, as uh, my friend Theo Ash would say. Thrived in play action, was able to get defenses moving, made good decisions on the run. He's got really good size, and he's got an incredible arm as well. He throws the ball very well. I think his throwing motion, it's tight. It's connected to his body. He makes good decisions with the football, and it just comes out of his hands quickly. All things that you really love to see from the quarterback position. The concerns with him, it's the deep ball. He cannot hit the deep ball to save his life. It's just, I, I don't get it because the talent is there. His deep ball accuracy is so underwhelming. We saw it all year for Texas, and he kind of held this offense back. On top of that, I felt like when he got under pressure, he would panic, make bad decisions, try to force the football. Not something I want to see. And he's not the greatest athlete in the world. I know he slimmed down last year, made some plays with his legs. That's not his strength. He's more of a pocket passer. He's got all the tools in the world to be a great quarterback, but we've yet to see Ewers put it all together. And that's why he's at number eight. I've got some serious concerns about that deep ball. And I think it could hold him back in these quarterback rankings. At number seven, it's Connor Wigman out of Texas A&M. I love this guy. I think he is my dark horse to finish his QB1 next year because he goes through his progressions. He's got elite ball placement. I think his ball placement was like Penix level. He threw the ball in some incredible windows 
The mobility is there. He's got all the tools. I like the footwork. Not too bad. Um, he just makes some good plays. He had an injury, though, an ankle injury that pretty much sidelined him the entire 2023 season. I think he played in four games. He looked fantastic in those games, by the way. He's got a weird throwing motion. Like, it reminds me of Phillip Rivers, kind of that weird kind of low sidearm delivery. He's got questions about the deep ball, and he's got some weird pocket presence stuff. I don't think it's bad, but didn't feel pressure at an elite rate. I think all of these are things that can, if he can tighten up that release, can sure up that deep ball a little bit because he's an athlete. He's got the size. He's got the ball placement that I love to see. He's a good decision maker. I think Wigman could be QB1 in this class come next year, but there are some concerns coming off an injury, some consistency stuff we didn't quite get to see. We didn't get to see a full year of Wigman, so this is going to be a big year for him. I think he's up for it. He's my number seven quarterback in this class. At number six, we've got Cam Ward from Miami. Now, he is not that fat. Horrible picture of him. Um, the only one we could get from Miami. Transferred from Washington State. I got a funny story about Cam Ward. I recorded a Cam Ward prospect spotlight because he declared for the draft. And I kid you not, 20 minutes after it went live, he announced that he was transferring to Miami. So, had to take the video down. Cam Ward is a very polarizing prospect. And I think the tools are there. He hasn't put it together. I think he's got the ceiling of like a Jalen Hurts and the floor of like a Malik Willis. That's how polarizing he is because what he does well, I really like. He's a good athlete, moves very, very well, connects at all three levels. I think he's got a pretty good deep ball and all things considered. He's got mobility. He can move around the pocket. I think his size is pretty good. All of that stuff is there. It's really when it comes to his delivery and how he throws the ball – Washington State ran so many screen passes that it's really a hard, it's hard to get an idea on how good of a passer he really is. Because when we did see him, it was a one read system. He would force the ball into coverage. We didn't get to see him go through his progressions. His delivery is not my favorite. I'm not too worried about it like I am more a Connor Wiegman. I think if he can work on going through his progressions and not forcing the ball into coverage, he can be an incredible quarterback and another guy who's got QB1 potential, I think, because the athleticism is there, the arm talent is there, the footwork is there, the size, everything you want hasn't put it all together. I think that's a big issue with a lot of these quarterbacks. You can see all the tools. Can they put it all together? I think Cam Ward's got the upside going to Miami in a pretty good offense. He's at number six for me. At number five, we've got Jackson Dart from Ole Miss, a dual threat quarterback, who I think has some incredible pocket presence. He just felt pressure extremely well. Um, I thought he's got the arm talent. Didn't, again, Ole Miss, one of the hardest offenses to scout anything with. Set the running backs, which we'll get to that next week. But go back to their receivers, whether it's Jonathan Mingo, whether it's A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. This year, Trey Harris. They just run a very heavy RPO offense. The ball comes out of the hands quickly. Very quarterback friendly, works for Dart. I like what he does, but it really hurts him, I think, in his development because he doesn't, he's not asked to read defenses. He, that's something that I don't really see from him. Now, what I do see from him good decision making, accuracy, deep ball, athleticism that's all there. He's also got a confidence about him that I absolutely love. The way he takes hits, gets up, reminds me of a Joe Burrow, reminds me of a Baker Mayfield, just a guy that's got this ensuing confidence about him at the quarterback position that I really appreciate. That being said, he's got it slide when he's on the run. Took some pretty hard hits. I think he's got all the tools. I don't think he'll finish as a QB1 contender because of this offense, and I think there's some really, maybe some better athletes, some better arms in this class that I think could get there. But I think Dart's got some tools, and he's at number five. At number four for me, it's Jalen Milrow from Alabama. Big fan of Milrow. I think a lot of people are going to naturally just be like, I mean, he's okay. Look at what he did after he got benched and was put back in the lineup. He was incredible for Alabama. Took him to the college football playoff. He's very athletic. Maybe the best pocket presence in this class. I mean, he feels pressure super well. Moves extremely well. He's mobile. He's got elite arm. I, it's a cannon attached to his arm. My only concern... Is he this year's Joe Milton, the athlete that everyone hypes up because there are some issues. 
He doesn't read defenses extremely well. He holds the ball for so long. He doesn't throw the ball away. He keeps his eyes downfield. That's a concern. I think his footwork is absolutely atrocious. He is a statue in the pocket. Now, he just stands there. He doesn't move his feet. Now, while he gets out of the pocket well, his accuracy up and down at times, He's got a lot of questions, but he's maybe the best athlete of any of these quarterbacks in this draft class. Everything is there for him to have a big year in Kalen DeBoer's offense this year. He's a guy that I think has a very real chance to be QB1 if things go his way, which I think they can and ultimately will. I've got Milro at four. At number three, it's going to be a good friend of the shows. If you guys are subscribed to the Patreon, you would know Noah Fafita out of Arizona. Yes, Got to interview Noah Fafita. Absolutely incredible kid. Love this guy. Um, he's just slippery. I mean, Russell Wilson vibes, which is a guy that when in the interview he talked about, that's who he models his game after. Super hard to tackle. He's got arm talent. It doesn't really feel like he can't make any throw. It's not like he's got one motion either. He can throw sidearm. He can throw it at multiple different angles. And I love that about Noah Fafita. He's very good under pressure. His deep ball, up and down. That's a concern. Um, <clears throat> had the tendency to stare down Tetro McMillan way too much. I mean, it, it did get a little rough at times because it's like, oh, we know who he's going to the football with. I'd like to see him read defenses a little bit better. And he's sub 200 pounds at 5'11". He's got very similar measurables to Bryce Young. Bryce Young, I think, was the more polished prospect. But I think Fafita has a lot of things that I really, really like to see. I like the arm. I like his mobility, athleticism. If he can improve that deep ball and reading his progressions, I think he could be a first-round pick next year. At number two, it is going to be Shadur Sanders out of Colorado. I know everyone is going to talk about the character. We know nothing. I think it's very wrong for us to judge things he has said as a detriment to him, the player. We're all going to say things that are stupid, but I feel like Colorado gets this unnecessary hate because everyone wants to see Dion in this offense fail because they come in with a lot of confidence. Yeah, they do talk a lot, but like, who cares? Like, it's not hurting anybody. And Shadur Sanders, the player, I think a lot of a lot of people are just rooting for him to fail. You look at the number, they're like, oh, no quarterback led his team to four wins. He had the worst offensive line in the country, and he put up incredible numbers. He's a very good decision maker. Never really felt out of control. He felt very calm, very collected, had this confidence. Colorado never felt like they were out of it because Shadur Sanders could keep them in games. He has that clutch gene. We saw it in that Colorado State game. He knows how to pull out a win out of nowhere. Never felt out of control. He's got very good pocket presence, moves very well. I don't think that was on its full display last year because he was under pressure an unbelievably high rate. I think we're going to see a lot more structure in this Colorado offense. There's more weapons for him to dispose the ball to. I think this offense is going to look a lot different than what we saw last year. And what we saw last year from Shadur Sanders was really, really promising. The deep ball, it's not there. He doesn't really have the strongest arm in the world. He doesn't really have the greatest footwork in the world. But he's a good decision maker, can connect on the short to intermediate, can extend plays with his legs. He's got confidence. I love Shadur Sanders. I think he's got a real chance. Him and my QB1 are very close for me. I don't think it's a that large of a gap. Yeah, I think he's got to improve some things, but I think he could be a really good player. And at number one, we've got Carson Beck from Georgia. I think he has some really good footwork and feel. Um, he reads defenses extremely well, uh, especially zone. He's a zone killer. It just felt like if you're in zone, he's going to absolutely expose you. He made some incredible throws. He's got incredible accuracy with the football. I mean, he does a lot of things really, really well at the quarterback position. I think he's got size. He's got the arm talent. He's got really, really good tools. He just needs to work on his play recognition. Reading coverage is a little bit better. Tried to force the ball at times. He didn't read blitzes pre-snap very well either. I'd like to see that improve for him. And then it felt like when he missed, he would overthrow him just a bit high. Like to see him kind of bring the ball down a little bit, hit him in the face mask, hit him in the numbers. He's got a lot of tools there. I think Carson Beck is the most promising quarterback prospect, but a lot of people are going to talk about this being a weak quarterback class. I don't see it. I think it's if you're comparing it to last year's where you got Caleb Williams and Drake May, 
yeah, it doesn't look as strong. But I think you've got a lot of guys who could come in and be starters. And you've got upside pieces here, whether that's a Miller Moss or Garrett Neusmeyer, who we talked about, whether it's Cade Klubnick, Quinn Ewers, Connor Wigman, Cam Ward. We didn't even talk about a guy like a Drew Aller who didn't make the cut. I really, really like Preston Stone and Seth Hennigan as well. There's some really interesting pieces. Who knows what Will Howard's going to do at Ohio State. There's a lot of guys in this class. It's very deep. Now, you don't have that true QB1, but you've got a lot of guys that are going to be fighting for that spot. I think it's going to make this quarterback race very interesting. If you guys like this, leave a like and subscribe. We're going to be doing position rankings every Saturday leading up to week zero of the college football season. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.